Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio. So today we need to have a little bit of a chat about tag teams, and specifically, which are the most expensive tag teams. Now, a couple of things to note before we get going here. Interestingly enough, the promos just don't count. And I'm not saying they don't count because they're not cool. I'm saying they don't count because none of them uh, attract any real value. Like, we have a Charizard and Brakeson promo. It's beautiful. It's alternate art. It's amazing. Yeah, d doesn't, doesn't get on the list. It's like a $15 card. Like, legitimately, on TCG Player right now, it's a $15 card. Does not count. Does not make the list. Feel free to be upset about that. None of the promos get on here. There are also a bunch of the, the tag teams that are running around about $100 that as it stands at the moment aren't really actually that close to the list, but there are a bunch around the $100 mark. So very quickly, the alternate art Blastoise and Piplup, which might legit be my favorite of them. It's amazing. The Rainbow Rare Gengar and Mimikyu, which we got alternate arts of these. The Rainbow Rares are not doing it for me. The alternate art of Marshadow and Machamp, which is one which I don't think gets enough love. The alternate art of Greninja and Zoroark, which is bootyful. And the alternate art of Slowpoke and Psyduck, which is amazing. What I will say is, there are a couple of these which are actually going down in price. We're not going to be doing a a huge combination here, a huge comparison. Many of these are actually going down in price at the moment, which is lovely. Not all, just some. There were actually two that came very close to making the list. That is Reshiram and Zekrom and Raichu and Alolan Raichu. But for whatever reason, they end up just a tiny bit short. But because a lot of the prices are quite close together, especially on the lower end, don't be surprised if we do this top 10 list in six months, a year, whatever, and these find their way in. But they don't get the way in today. So we need to go for an actual top 10. So let's start off at number 10 with the Rainbow Rare Eevee and Snorlax, which comes in at about $130. Uh, as a side note, because I think this is very important. Yes, I use TCG Player as a guide, but I also looked around a bunch of other places these prices are fluctuating quite a lot. They do fluctuate quite wildly at times. So, look, I'm putting this one at $130, but just bear with me, all right? It's not an exact science. I'm doing my best to find an accurate, well, an accurate judge. Uh, there is an alternate art of this one, but it was a tin promo, so it's like an $18 card. Beautiful, but an $18 card because it was a tin promo. Cool. I love Eevee and Snorlax. I think it's absolutely stunning. But I, I think the Rainbow Rare is just kind of pointless. It's a really fun card, incidentally. 240 to an Evolution Pokemon for 4 energy. And you've got 4 energy, 210. But if you've got a fifth one on there, you get to draw until you have 10 cards in your hand. There is a lot I like about Eevee and Snorlax as a card. I just think the Rainbow Rare is a bit meh. In at number 9, speaking of Rainbow Rares, we've got the Rainbow Rare Reshiram and Charizard, which comes in at $135. And again, it's a very cool card. I mean, Reshiram and Charizard saw a bunch of play and a bunch of success. It was one of the best decks for a long time. It's got Outrage. It can do 230 damage. It can do 300 damage. There is a lot, honestly, to like about this. But the fact of the matter is, it's a Rainbow Rare, and it's got Charizard on, and that's enough to push it up. Once again, there is an alternate art of this, but it was a promo. It is at least a $35 card, but remember this list started at $130. The promos are nowhere near this list. And as a side note, right, there is going to come a point where these promos are probably really expensive, okay? So... Just, just a little tip for your old pal Wossy here, yeah? If you want these promos, go get them sooner rather than later. In at number 8, also a Rainbow Rare, but the last one on the list, we've got the Rainbow and Rare Mewtwo and Mew that comes in at $140. Interesting side note, of course, that all the bottom of this list is the Rainbow Rare. Now, 
this was a car that literally won the world championships. Like, Henry Brand won worlds with Mewtwo and Mew. It allows you to copy the attack of any Pokemon GX and EX on your bench or in your discard pile. It's absolutely flat out ridiculously broken. It's absurdly good. And you'll probably, well, you'll probably guess what I'm about to say next, right? You ready? Yes, it was an alternate art. But it was a promo, so it doesn't come close. It's a $40 card. Bearing in mind this card was so good, it literally won worlds. Yeah, that the promos are way too cheap for this right now. You have been warned. Now, in at number seven, we've got Sableye and Tyranitar. Or should I say, Mega Sableye and Tyranitar. And from here on in, we are just going for alternate arts all the way up. This one comes in at about $160, but like many of them has been falling in recent months. And this one was never particularly playable. I mean, I kind of love the GX attack that lets you trash the top 15 cards of your opponent's deck. That's amazing. And I love that for 5 energy, you do 210 and take an extra prize card if you KO a GX or an EX. And I'm not saying it was never played, and I'm not saying it never saw any success. It was a good card. I'm saying it was so expensive, it was always on the fringes, rather than things like Reshiram and Charizard or Mewtwo and Mew, that were very much at the center of the metagame. In at number 6 at $170, we've got Solgaleo and Lunala. But there's not been much change. 130, 135, 140, 160, 170. It's like I'm back at an auction house. These are all quite close together. And although all of these are a fair bit above a lot of the others, except the ones I've shouted out at the beginning, but there is a lot of similarity here in terms of the prices. Now, Solgaleo and Lunala... What we got ourselves here is a card that's got Lily on. It's not a particularly playable card. Certainly, it's one of the lesser played cards on this entire list. But there's a Lily on there. Now, to be fair, it does do 200 damage. And if you play Lily's full force, you get immunity for a turn, which is fun. But largely, this is good because it's got Lily on the artwork. Now, in at number five, we've got Arceus and Dialga and Palkia. And this is kind of... The proof, if you will, that playability is not everything. Because of all the cards on this list, this was probably the best. Annoyingly, or not annoyingly, depending how you look at it, because we had those two cancelled worlds because of the whole pandemic thing, we never actually saw this at the World Championships. So whereas Mew to a Mew won worlds and this didn't, well, this never got a chance. But you do have three legendary Pokemon, your Palkia, your Dialga, and your Arceus. And you've got a GX attack that says for the rest of the game, all your attacks do 30 more damage, and you take an extra prize. And an attack that does 150 and attaches free basic energy from your deck, which is ridiculous. You don't have to get them in hand. You don't have to get them in the discard. Just they're in your deck. It's fine. Phenomenal card. Brilliant card. I hated it. One of my least favorite cards ever. But it was still a phenomenal card. Great artwork. And it's expensive at 180, don't get me wrong. But it's only 180 at number 5. And then in at number 4, well the biggest jump we've seen so far is Gardevoir and Sylveon. Now to be fair, this was a good card. You can search your deck for two fairy energy for a single energy. Really good if you get the first attack. For free energy, you do 150 and move your energy around as you like. And then if you can get 6 energy on, you do 200 damage, and your opponent shuffles their entire hand into their deck. And then probably loses, because they're in top deck mode for, like, the rest of the game. This was another deck. I couldn't play this. I was too nervous to play this deck. But I also really disliked playing against it. I couldn't win. What you've got here are two very popular Pokemon in Gardevoir and Sylveon, with the fanciest version of it. And honestly, that explains it pretty gosh darn nicely. And this is where we see the big jump. Because in at number three, at $275, we've got Magikarp and Wailord. And I don't actually like making videos like this. Because I remember when I could have picked this card up for like 20, 30 quid. There were times it was not that expensive. Especially on release. It was never cheap, cheap. But it was fine. I had opportunities to pick this up for a decent price. Those opportunities have gone, which makes me really sad. Um, yeah, it's $275 right now. And look, Magikarp's fine, but I love me some Wailord. Wailord is a very 
favorite Pokemon in my house. We love Waylord. And actually, this one saw a bit of play and success purely because it's got 300 HP. That was it. I mean, to be fair, it could, for 8 energy, do 100 damage to each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. And I did see that used a few times. But mostly it had absolutely ridiculous HP. So it worked very nicely as a wall. I wish I'd bought this when it was cheaper. In at number 2, we've got Gengar and Mimikyu. Yeah, that's right. I called out the Rainbow Rare as being pretty close. Gengar and Mimikyu, the alternate art, does actually get on here and gets on here at number 2 at $300. And this one, I mean, to be fair, it was a playable card. It did see a bunch of play. 2 energy, 50 damage for each trainer card in your opponent's hand. And it had Horror House GX, which was super annoying because your opponent cannot play any cards from their hand during their next turn. But also, if you put a second energy on there, you could make each player draw until they have seven cards in hand. So your opponent ends up with a large hand coming back into your turn. So Poltergeist is better, and you get extra cards as well. But as I've said, when you get this high up on the list, it's not a playability thing. Gengar and Mimikyu are both horrendously popular. You whack both of them on a card, and this is what happens. But in at number one, and it is not even close, Latias and Latios. And this comes in, the best estimate I can give you here is $780. And I want to round it up to $800. I do, but I'm looking around and it, it does, it's not justified. $780 is about what this seems to be selling for at the moment. And look, it's Latias and Latios making a heart. It's amazing. It's adorable. I love it. Now, I never saw this card actually cheap, but there were times I could have picked it up for like 100, couple hundred. I really wish I had. Not so I could flip it now and, and make some money, because Latias is Baby Daisy's spirit Pokemon. Well, the Baby Daisy's five now. She's not that much of a baby anymore. And I just love this card. And in the same way, we talk about the Moonbryon as being the card from the Sword and Shield era. This was the card from the Sun and Moon era. Of the entire block, this is it. This is the number one card. It is, it, it's not talked about as much as Moonbryon is talked about, which in some ways is quite weird, but make no mistake about it, this is a ridiculous card. And it'll come down here and there. It's come down a little bit in the past couple of months, but let's, let's not go making any mistakes here, all right? This is a ridiculous card. It is a ridiculously popular card. A ridiculously expensive card. Even in terms of playability, it wasn't bad. Because you could attach 5 energy from your discard part of your Pokemon in any way you like. But also gain immunity the following turn. But let's not beat around the bush here. This is just one of the most stunning cards ever released. And it came around in Team Up. And frankly, even though Team Up is not that cheap nowadays, your best hope for getting this card at a decent price is actually just buying a couple bags of Team Up and crossing your fingers harder than you've ever crossed them in your life. Because that is about the only way you're ever going to get this at a decent price. And the answer is, you're probably not going to. And I'm sorry. And that makes me kind of sad. Because I'm one of the people that wants to pick this up for a reasonable price. And I do unfortunately think those days are gone. Never mind. I've shown you all these cool tag teams and now it's over to you guys. Which ones of these did you pick up when you had the chance? Which ones did you miss? Go nuts in the comment section, but be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about Pokemon and card games and Pokemon card games, all kinds of fun things. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, join a Discord, and all kinds of fun things. And of course, get shoutouts on the channel, like the lovely Tamblin, who's been a supporter of us for a while now and is a very lovely person. So shout out to them for the support and the loveliness. But by far the most important thing as always... Look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.